The 2016-17 provincial budget saw operating funding for school divisions cut by $22 million. What is your plan for restoring education funding to previous levels? School divisions, boards of education and division staff across this province have demonstrated commitment to ensure that all students have the opportunity to reach their potential. Our government has worked in partnership with the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation, Saskatchewan School Boards Association and local school boards to set forth a strategic sector plan. We have seen some encouraging results. Graduation rates across the province have improved. The number of students reading at grade level by grade three has increased, and the achievement gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students has decreased. On a pure dollar basis, we will continue to grow the economy so we can have more money for health care, social services, and education. However, while these partnerships are positive and the results are indeed encouraging, there is always more work to be done. Teachers know the importance of inclusive education. This means accommodating students regardless of their physical, emotional, intellectual, or social differences. To be implemented successfully, it requires supports for students and teachers. How will you support inclusive education? Inclusive education is of great importance to me. I have made a point of listening to teachers who have shared their stories of their classrooms. Clearly, we have many talented educators in the province, and I realize that our job is not finished. I am committed to setting up a top-level cabinet committee of the child, whereby the needs of children and youth in our province can be integrated. To be truly inclusive, we must coordinate efforts between ministries so that we can meet the needs of all the students in our schools. A discussion about inclusiveness must include comments about the federal government's responsibility or lack thereof. The federal government did not live up to its promise, a promise that would have provided funding to, for, to support second language programs in our schools. I will take this battle up and expect the federal government to live by their word. One of the most important relationships in education is the relationship between students and their teachers. Teachers know their students, their families, and their communities. How will you ensure local voices are heard? During the past few weeks, I've had an incredible opportunity to talk with and listen to people in communities across the province. This valuable experience has allowed me to observe the rich heritage and diverse qualities of our communities. While we may have goals and values that overlap, it is abundantly clear that the communities in Saskatchewan are unique and so too is each school division. It will be important to work together to manage efficiencies, yet understand that one policy for all is not the approach to take. Effective communication between ministries can be a great starting point to ensure that local voices are heard and that education of all students becomes a top priority. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child guarantees access to high-quality public education. What steps will you take to ensure students across our province receive a high-quality education within Saskatchewan's publicly funded public education system? Saskatchewan's greatest natural resource is our children, and we want to keep it that way. Research and education has shown that equity gets excellence, but this can only happen through an adequately funded public education system. Meeting the needs of the child is not just about schools. Rather, it requires an integration of other ministries that impact children and families. And once again, I must mention, uh, make mention of a ministry that will take into account the needs of children, families, and communities. I am proposing a cabinet committee of the child that will coordinate resources so that the level of education across the province is equitable and creates opportunities for excellence. The Canadian Teachers Federation says safe and caring schools are a major priority for the profession at the national level, yet teachers are expressing growing concern about violence in schools. What is your plan for promoting safe and caring schools in our province? When teachers state that they are concerned about violence in schools, I am concerned. I strongly support the use of bully prevention programs in every school, 
In particular, we must educate the youngest members of school and begin to work closely with students who show signs of aggression. In concert with the school program, we see outside organizations helping to reinforce a message that bullying in any form is not acceptable. Our own Saskatchewan Rough Riders have been recognized for its program, Imagine No Bullying, where students learn how to create safe environments for themselves and others. A school in my own constituency of Saskatoon Willow Grove started buddy benches. Sitting on a buddy bench meant another student would pop by to visit or encourage his or new friend to join in this activity. Violent behavior must be recognized, understood, planned for, and stopped.